the Asian carp are on the move. These fish came from the Mississippi River and were found traveling north towards the Great Lakes via the Illinois River. For anglers like Captain Todd Brill of the Gold Coast Fishing Charter Company, the Asian carp is a major concern for their businesses. We've created a $4.8 billion sport fishery on the Great Lakes, and um, without that, I, it, would, it would really hurt us. So it's, it's something definitely um, I take very serious. The carp are an invasive species with no natural predators, and they have been growing in the wild since the 1980s, since arriving from Southeast Asia. In the Illinois River, they've already replaced 95% of the fish biomass, according to the National Wildlife Foundation. As of June 2010, they have been found in Lake Calumet, just seven miles from Lake Michigan. Dr. Peter Elsop is an ecological model data analyst in the University of Michigan's Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research. He's been studying the invasive carp and their effect on the native species in the area, such as perch, lake trout, and walleye. These fish are what we call planktivores, so they eat algae and small microscopic organisms in the water column called zooplankton. The effects of Asian carp entering Lake Michigan could be catastrophic. So why are the fish moving into these areas? The Asian carp was introduced by other species' natural resources, and they thrive in warmer waters due to better fitting their species. Climate change only accelerates this migration, according to climate.gov. It's kind of a different environment than most of the lakes, so these fish would probably do very well there. So warm water tributaries. We see in, in Michigan, uh, the St. Joe is a very productive warm water tributary. Back in St. Joseph, Captain Todd is worried about how the Asian carp would affect his company around 20 miles north of Michigan's southern border. Fishing companies like his on Lake Michigan could be victims to the invasive species. When you talk to a lot of the, the fishermen and stuff that are on the Illinois River and some of these rivers where they have taken off, they haven't been able to adapt. I mean, it's completely destroyed their fishery. Captain Todd's business depends on salmon and trout, which would be killed if the Asian carp stripped their resources, leaving less food for native species. The Great Lakes are a special place, of the world's largest freshwater. We're very fortunate living here. A rise in warmer waters may continue, but the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are working on a solution to keep them from migrating further into the Great Lakes from the Illinois River. So we do want to have a, a layered uh, defense system. There is no one single uh, mechanism here uh, to stop them, so we're looking at multiple measures to help uh, have a, a layered. The Brandon Road Lock and Dam is located on the Illinois River in the outskirts of the Chicago metropolitan area. It is the proposed site for a multi-million dollar barrier project to help keep the carp in the Illinois River and out of the Great Lakes. In 2019, we interviewed Andrew Leach T, who's the project manager for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. This area here in orange represents the Engineer Channel, which is uh, downstream of the lock here. And uh, then we'd have an electric barrier, uh, some acoustics, and an air bubble curtain here to uh, discourage uh, fish from coming in. Funding for this project is still up in the air. Four years later, construction has not yet begun for the dam. Costs for the project are going up, and it may take three to four years to complete. For now, the only physical measure in place so far is an electric barrier near Joliet, Illinois. However, according to the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, the carp are growing in size and in numbers. And with over a span since 1968 to 2002, the Great Lakes warmed up to 5.2 degrees Fahrenheit more. These lake surface temperatures are projected to rise by as much as 7 degrees by 2050 and 12.1 degrees by 2100. Due to climate change of the waters, the carp are attracted to the other side of the barrier. These carp would thrive in lakes due to all the abundance of algae and nutrients, according to the University of Michigan. If the carp do prevail, it could lead to damage in native species and a decline in the fishing industries local communities rely on. But there are ways locals can make an impact, such as simply catching the fish. Although things may look bad, locals are learning to adjust by staying informed about protecting the Great Lakes. This has been my livelihood. This is all I do. Um, I don't have any other job. And uh, to, after doing it for going on 15 years here, um, it's scary. I got two young boys and it's, I want to be able to show this to them when they get older.